Welcome to the 10v10. I am Steph. I'm Nick. I'm Mike. Oh, and today we have exciting category for you. We are doing area control. Yes. Yes. Do you guys like area control? Whatever I, it is. I always think I don't like area control because I don't like a ton of conflict <laughs> in games, to sure. be completely honest. But I do honestly like it. I just, I think I, in my head, I think I don't. I find that I like area control in some games that it's not directly all area control. Like I'm not a big fan of El Grande or Wallenstein, but I'll, I like other things that have area control with other mechanics. So if that's it, then you're kind of like, ah, it's just not, not that appealing. It's not my first choice, no. Okay. But I, I still found a bunch of games that I love. Oh yeah, so. totally. Yeah, yeah. We this this list was actually pretty easy for us to make. It was it was yeah. nice. I realize, like you, uh, we like it a little better than we thought, but there aren't a ton on here that are like Yousef, like that are strictly all you do is area control. There are games with an area control element to it, which I think is a, a cool way to spice up a game, add some intrigue and interest. Yeah but have some other things going on. Well, so. I think area control automatically people think like fighting, like something where it's like, I'm trying to take this like risk, like I'm coming yeah, to take right. Quebec, so I'm gonna fight. And a lot of it is just like, it's area majority, it's area control. Like it's just having the most of your, whatever it is, it could be influence, it could be uh, cows, I don't know, you know, whatever. It's like, it's not necessarily always like, let's kill each other. And I think it gets in my mind, that's what I always think it is. Yeah. So uh, shall we go <laughs> ahead and just get right into it then? I'm ready to go. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, so starting off right now, the uh, top number 10 from BGG. You, the users who have all ranked your games out there, the highest, 10th highest area control majority game is Eclipse. Yes, indeed. And that's number 40 ranked overall Ooh. on BGG. So that's a, a, a well-liked game. So the number 10 is 40 overall. So you can tell that all these games are going to be very highly yes. liked uh, from you, the folks at BGG. <laughs> so Eclipse is a, is a space game. A big 4X game. Kind of a big 4X game where you're flying around and kind of discovering parts of a game galaxy uh, and, and putting your influence out there to control to get uh, different kind of resource mm -hmm. production stuff. So a lot of resource You're like management. colonizing different planets. Some planets mm -hmm. will give you science. Some will give you like economy. Um, and some will give you materials. And this actually just missed our list. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it was like right there. <laughs> yeah, it's probably, it's probably like just outside the list for us as well. This is a game that we got... We did the, the typical thing that I think a lot of board gamers do when they're very new in the hobby. We found BGG, as you do, and um, we just I just looked at the top 10 games and went, oh, so these are the best games ever made. <laughs> and we're supposed to get these 10 games. Now, luckily, I didn't do that. I did. <laughs> Yeah, and so, right, and so it's a. What else do you have to go off of? You're like, yeah, well, exactly. Like this. Not great. having no idea. Like these may not be games that I personally enjoy. Right. And so one of the games we got was Eclipse because I think at that point when we started gaming, it was like number nine, and now it's forty. So there's a lot of new stuff that's that's yeah. pushed its way in, but and then we kind of got it out. And we were like, oh. Oh no! Close the box. We're like, we'll let's just put this years. away for four <laughs> years. Yeah, but we kept it. And then recently, we were like, I bet it's not nearly as heavy as we remember. And so we busted it out, and it's became one of our favorite uh, kind of four X big space games. It's yeah. incredible. It's a sim game, really. I mean, you're building up your technologies. You're you totally expanding. are expanding. It's just yeah, it's awesome. It's super cool, and obviously the folks at BGG like it to rank it number 40 overall and number 10 on the area control kind of category. Uh, but let's get into our number 10. Let's yeah? do it. We got to do it now. Okay, our number 10 is Small World coming in BGG's overall ranking at 221. And now this is actually pretty much only area control. I mean, there's some other elements to it, but you are taking over this map. Right. This yeah, this that is, is it is pretty straight. I mean, I guess there's there's lots of like player powers because depending on which, yeah, which right. faction you get and then the like little superpower attached to them, uh, it can be anything. But yeah, we like Small World a lot. This was kind of the first like real area control game that we got into. Yeah, and, and you're right, Steph. This one is uh, pretty much that's what you do. It's just you get those people to get a little bit of an advantage in maybe this terrain or this scoring ability there, but then you're just trying to wipe out other people or your own people mm -hmm. if it's a, you know your former kind of civilization or whatever. Uh, and that's all you do is just moving people around and getting more of them. Yeah. Out. So do, do you like the base one? or I know there's tons of expansions and I know there's all this stuff that you can add. And so We actually surprisingly don't have any of the faction expansion which is mostly what know, they for are. For a long time we're like we want them to come out in packs and now they come out in packs and we're like 
We'll, it, we'll get it later. It just hasn't. Well, and I feel like the reason is because we mostly are teaching this game to new people. And one thing I like about the game is it's very simple. Like, it's just you have your, your little cardboard people, your little cardboard chits. And if you're trying to take over an area, it's two people to take over the area yeah. plus one for everything in that area. So if yeah, I'm trying to take over Mike, he has one person in there. It's going to take me three. Two for the area, one for his chit. He has two people in there. It's going to take me four. And no matter what, it's always just two plus three. So However many things are in there. It's easy to determine what you need. Um, and then how do you feel about this one, Steph? Oh, yeah, I really like this one. They really have supported the heck out of it, and it's it's great. And uh, as far as just like a straightforward, pretty easy to learn area control, uh, I love it. I just love it. It's really good. <laughs> well, let's get into number nine from you, the folks of Board Game Geek. So number nine is a, a new-ish uh, area control game that's taken over Flash the, the right? woodlands. It's Root. Yes. And number 39 overall ranked on Board Game Geek. Number nine in the area control influence. This game is uh, an asymmetrical game of, uh, I think it's of woodland might and right. And you're trying to kind of either retake the force if it was taken away from you, trying to keep your who you're playing. control. Yeah. If you're the, the Marquita cat, you're just trying to maintain the control you've already gained over the influence and stuff. Uh, and, and all of the different uh, factions are really uh they're way different way asymmetric you're always trying to get to a, a kind of a point threshold ultimately but your path to do that is very different yeah um and what do y'all think about root because i like it not, not it's not really for me i mean I, I was happy to play it i'm not sure i need to play it again but i i would right the, the game pushes you to be highly aggressive it seems like the factions are very different but it always boils down to if you're not actively getting in the face of other people and doing your stuff, you're not going to win. So the best and worst thing about these games that like leader games does like vast like yeah. this is they're so asymmetric that it's got such a steep learning curve because if you are learning a different faction, you're essentially learning a whole new game. Like yeah. the general mechanics are the same. Like you move this way, you roll die, that's how you fight, all this kind of stuff. But it's like you are doing, it's so vastly different. Like sometimes the Marquita Cat, you start, the whole force is yours. And if you are the Vagabond, you're just one dude just being like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just in the trees. That's all you're doing. And then if you're the lizard people, you're like raising people from the dead. It's like, and then it's just, and then they keep adding faction, which I think is awesome. But this is a game, like if we had a, a, a group that wanted to play this game all the time, so we got to play it, we all got yeah. very familiar with all the roles, I think I would like it better. I do like the game quite a bit. That's probably true, yeah. Because if you were just playing it a lot, you could get really familiar and just kind of go with it. And Yeah. But playing every like once a year, every few months is like, ah, I don't remember yeah. the rules. And it's you tough. really <laughs> feel like the three of us are generally always playing different games not necessarily a brand new game but like we try to keep it varied because we have so much stuff to play yeah it's like I, there's so much it's yeah. tough to keep playing stuff <laughs> over and over because I'm yeah. coming around a route every two yeah. months three well, months well not to mention like, this is a game you really want four people playing yeah because you want yeah. you, it's like two players which is generally how we're playing stuff it's just not great now I'm interested in the co-op mode they have coming out with the new right. expansion they like well they expand oh, the call mode and I'm like that might be interesting and i'm curious of, it, yeah i'm more curious about that so I'm, I'm excited for the future i do like root but it'll never be that high for me i think because of the learning curve and the fact that we always you always want four people yeah yeah well but that's good people out there love it all quite like it so that's good good for number 39 within a year of it kind of coming out so yeah it's done good bad. work in a short period of time so that is number nine from board game geek and rut let's get into our number nine Rit. our number nine is dominant species number 52 ranked on BGG overall, Dang. which is one of my favorites. It's so good. <laughs> yeah. Have you guys played Dominant Species? Yes. He has. I have. He hasn't. But here's the thing. Oh. It was one of the first modern board games I played, which is not a good thing because it's a big it game. Early on. Yeah, and it's heavy. Familiar. And I played it with a friend, uh, uh, our cousin Sarah, and then uh, and her fiance. And it was, I got through it. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. His brain's like, oh my God. <laughs> and I haven't played it since, and I've always wanted to play it, because I'm like, right. now I think I would actually like it, but I, it was, it, I was hang on by a thread, and I <laughs> really? had no idea what was going on. For your first hobby board game, that's not a good choice. <laughs> yeah, I agree. You dove into the I mean, so it, it's, it's a worker placement game, so it's not just strictly area control. You're doing all these worker placement things to upgrade your species and try and, like, adapt to new... Um, territories and then you move in you don't necessarily kill other people but you're trying to 
expand and get points different ways on the board. Um, and there's event cards that are just devastating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to get on the dominance track so you can just claim those cards early and so people won't do mean things to you and you could do them to them yeah. almost. And so it can be kind of mean in that way, but it's mostly just a worker placement game, getting everything going to take over the land. I think you sold it on me, Steph. I want to give it a try yeah. now. I feel like I'm ready. Do it. We should play it next time yeah. we're together. We should play it. Oh, no, we keep coming oh up. my goodness. This huge list. list. By the time we, we have that huge list. Out, it's be ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that's number nine from us. Uh, uh, Dominant Species, number 52 overall. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad. Let's get into number eight from Area Control on Board Game Geek. You people. Number eight is a, is a big one. This is like, for me, this is what I think of. I think area control, yeah. conflict driven. It's Blood Rage, all right? Number 30 Took overall. Took by storm, rage. yeah. Blood Rage is just like, you get Viking people and sea monsters and giants and you're just gonna throw them down and yig yourself. Like, it, it fits like Viking culture and stuff. You're gonna, you're gonna battle on, over these lands for ultimate glory. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, and dying in glory is the best way to go, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and Blood Rage is ultimately kind of a drafting game. You're drafting these cards around, you're trying to move people into different areas using uh, kind of like action points, I guess, like your rage. Yeah. Uh, and and then you attack stuff, and I'd go into it deeper, except for I'm so horrible at this game. <laughs> I'm not great, Mike. And it's just so hard, but I do enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, I, I only have played one time, and, and so everybody else was experienced, or most people, and then I drafted poorly and then I just got hosed yeah. I'm like well I think maybe I should have played with all newbies yeah, and yeah. maybe we could have made mistakes together that's yeah. a tricky part is if you're playing against more experienced people and it's your first time or second time I think it's going to be you're gonna real get hard smashed. to win smashed yeah. Yeah. yeah you're going to get but, absolutely uh, destroyed yeah but I've enjoyed the plays I've done it I've just I'm always like by the end of the game I'm like ah oh, I see why I should have drafted that card earlier but then the game ends and I don't play it for a year and I forget yeah and so it's how it goes. A vicious cycle. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's great though. I'm also not. I'm better than you, but that's not saying much. Um, not, I'm also not low. great. At the Ouch! Yeah, he's, he's, he's you just got burned. Bad. It's true. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> if I didn't burn myself so badly, I'd be offended. But I'm like, you're right. I am. I am legitimately worse than you, and you're not great either. But I am worse. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's a rough one, but it is a good game. And blood, and some of the best minis still just are so good. Oh, yeah. The minis in this game. Um, yeah. So that's uh, your number eight, Blood Rage. Let's go into. Our number eight. Our number eight is Wendake at coming in at BG's rank 820. 820. So that's pretty lower. I mean, that's in the top thousand. Yeah, no, it's in the probably, top thousand. Yeah, I mean, it's thousand. probably just lesser known. I mean, it, it kind of like flew under the radar, I think. Unfortunately, it's super, yeah. It super did. It was bizarre. So we got this personally at Gen Con 2018. We like saw it across the room. Yeah, I was just like, we were just like, <laughs> what's, what's that? that? What's that? We Give me. We rolled the Renegade, talked to Manny Hutchinson. We were like, what is this game? And she's like, you should get it. And we did. And then um, we just kind of haven't heard anything about and it since. No one has ever played it. <laughs> I don't know. Have you played it, Steph? Yes. <laughs> so what are your thoughts on it? Because like we quite like it, and, I, and it's, it's in just my top sort of ten. Bizarre that of all time. Yeah. I love Windake. Yeah, yeah. it so has a it has a mix of really cool mechanics that I like, and then some that I, I don't like. So it it has a lot of cool things. Like the moving board is is really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that like, action selection you, you system. You take actions, and then it's like, oh, but if I do this now, then I might not be able to do that. It's yeah. Just, so I like that, and I also like the tracks where you're trying to move up these different tracks mm -hmm. um, to balance out. Because I think what you get the lower one or, or something. Yeah, yeah. It's been it's been a while, but I, I enjoy. I remember enjoying the the different tracks that you're trying to move up. And it's it's very cool, and, you know. And it's just it's got a, a lot of different stuff happening. Yeah. And I just and I and I'll, it's just it's thinky as all heck, and it's just trying to figure out like what's the best way, and the, as Mike said, with the kind of tic-tac-toe board where you have these nine tiles and you can you know, activate a line, so down, across, or diagonal, but then they flip over and then they slide down, so once on the bottom, come off, yeah. flip back over and go to the top, so it's constantly doing this thing, so trying to figure out, what because then the ones that are flipped over, if you then activate them activate ones that are flipped over they just don't really do anything they, they don't do, do their much. own action yeah they yeah, do a, they like do you're a, saying step like how long do i want to go without 
this action. Yeah, and so it's just thing. super thinky. And then you're trying to get resources on like the main board, the area control board. And it's just cool. And it, it takes the theme. It's about uh, it's about the Wendat tribe that are up in like the kind of Michigan area. Mm -hmm. And it, it's not just like, it, it treats it with respect and they did their research and like, and, and really it's, it's just a really wonderful game that's pretty heavy and thinky and fun and really wonderful that just no one plays. <laughs> it's just like, Go figure. I feel like no one has heard of it. No one talks about it. It just went completely under the radar and it's really unfortunate because you should try it. If you, if you come across Wendake, it's outstanding. It's yeah. incredible. We quite like it anyway. It's good enough for number eight on our list. So sure. let's go ahead and get a number seven with you, the folks at Board Game Geek. So back to Board Game Geek. Number seven Whoa. is Spirit Island. Spirit Island. Which is number 14 overall, which is fun for numbers. Seven and 14. That is fun. And 21 or, you know, whatever. So anyway, Spirit Island is a game uh, where you are playing uh, the, the various spirits that kind of... Um, live and thrive yeah, in this inhabit island. this island yeah. and there's kind of invaders you know uh, people are, yeah. are coming in and set up shop in, yeah. and build uh towns and stuff and you as the islander are kind of going into you know afraid not yeah protect yourself big finger waggle big so, finger waggle eh, there. Eh, eh, eh. get out of here with that business uh this appeared on our co-ops list uh uh, um, as it's a very popular game like i said it it's number, quite <laughs> number 14 overall ranked uh so i remember we were talking steph you were saying with spirit island it was not quite your favorite it's probably a bit too long for me i mean i, I like co-ops and you know i liked what it was doing with the card mechanic um you know i mean area control is not like a, a, again it's not like my favorite mechanic so i'm not drawn right. to that but i liked what the game was offering it, i just wish it was in a shorter time period yeah i agree with that yeah we me. talked about it yeah. before it's long it's heavy it's another game that has quite a, a kind of a, a learning, learning curve. curve especially because the the spirits are asymmetric and stuff like that so you know you want to be a, a, a good member of the team but if you don't really know how everything works it can be tough the one thing i do i think it's kind of neat is seeing a um an area control game or area influence game that's cooperative yeah it's very so you're cool. not trying to fight necessarily over each other you're trying to like work together to, to kind of get control of these well, areas on top to, of that to it's fight like some, you know common foe it's also cool in terms of the theme it's like instead of being the colonists inhabiting a land and there's tons of, the, of yeah, those saying, kinds of some haunted it's the opposite you're yeah you're yeah. like you're the island being like Excuse me. Like, no, we live here. You know, and and I, I think that's here. a cool a cool twist on on a very common mechanic. You yeah. know, and so yeah, Spirit Island's cool. Again, I don't think I'll ever be, it'll ever be any of my favorites. I don't think I'll play it very often ever. But um, it's yeah. so cool and pretty. Anyway, it's number seven. It yeah, is pretty. It is, area it is pretty. influence category number fourteen overall. That is Spirit Island. So let's go ahead and get into our number seven. Number seven is Mombasa, coming in at BGG ranked 63. Now, this is a game that has a lot of different mechanics, so it, I was immediately drawn to this. And the, the the actual area influence in this game is controlled by everybody, so there are different markets that are expanding on this board, but you might want to invest in black, so you expand the black, but somebody else might be investing in black, so they help you. Or they might be trying to push back black because they don't want black to like get more. Interesting. So it's like it, it's interesting because everybody can do whatever they want. It's kind of cool the whole the sort of like loose alliances you could build with people because you're like we're sort of working toward the same thing yes. but it's mutually beneficial. I'll keep yeah. this going for now until it doesn't help me as much as <laughs> I need it to. You have to really plan what you're gonna do in this game and it's really it's really good. It's, it's one of them good. smart people <laughs> games. It's one of them gotta have games. forethought and it's stuff. It's the fist making these kinds of games. Yeah. Definitely need forethought yeah, in this that's, game. That's why <laughs> I'm sure I have I'll not played it and probably won't because I'm just like I'm just gonna lose. Oh uh, no. <laughs> Uh, but that is uh, Mombasa, which is number seven. Uh, from us, number 63, which is nine times seven. Again, math, fun. It's fun, fun math. times over That's here. It's pretty awesome. I'm just, fun times it's all making sense up here to me math. right now, man. Uh, so let's go into number six with Board Game Geek. So number six from the folks of Board Game Geek yes. is War of the Ring. Lord of the Ring. Which is number 12 girl. overall. Yes, indeed. In the keeping with the whole doubling the number from <laughs> the, the rank You're to the overall wrong. rank. So in War of the Ring, uh, I'll have Nick, the, the resident Lord of the Rings fanatic, explain what the hell I mean, you can do. I feel like we all like Lord of the Rings a lot. Uh, I mean, like, Didn't you just get some dogs and name them Merry and Pippin? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Are yeah. there puppies in that room over there named Merry and Pippin? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> we hear dogs uh, in the background. It's them interrupting us and they're named after The Puppers Murph, yeah. 
yeah, the indeed. Book. They're Mary Piven and Z. Marriott, Marriottic brand new book and Peregrine Took. Yeah. yeah, so War of the Ring is a, is a two player, I guess you can play it, it's a two player game. Big, massive, massive, uh, dudes on a map kind of game where Fight one player the plays the as the free people. So, you know, the Frodo, Sam, Aragorn, Legos, Gimli, all them. And then one player plays as the Shadow Army, uh, you know, Sauron and, and all his peoples. And so essentially, uh, it, it's pretty simple the way you can, the game is not simple, but the, the objective is simple. If you are the Shadow Army, you want to take over a certain amount of um, strongholds, essentially, from the free people. You take over Lorien, go take over, you know, Minas Tirith, go take over right. um, Edoras and stuff like that. And then as the free people, you can win also by taking over territories, but you probably won't win that <laughs> way. It's very difficult very for the free people to do that. Or you can win by destroying the ring. It is Lord of the Rings in a box. Everything, you can, Tom Bombadil's a card at some point, you know, you're like, you ain't doing nothing, you just sit in the old forest. But like, it's, it's, uh, I've talked enough about it. Steph, have you played War of the Ring? Are you a fan? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I've, I've only ever played it twice, and that's one. That's the one game I want to be like, I need to play this at least once a year, because it is yes. so good. And and you, you, at one point in your little blurb, you're like, and the other goal for the fellowship is that they could drop the ring into Mordor. I'm like, can you? I've never done it. They don't feel it. like it. <laughs> Technically, you could. I, I, I have like one. I have one as a free people. Um, and the cool thing about one thing, cool thing about the free people, and then we'll move on because I'll talk, keep talking about Lord of the Rings forever, is you you get to kind of play your own version of the books because you can have right. different people leave the fellowship, and you can have like Boromir go to Lorien and help defend, you know, Galadriel and all these people and so like you don't have to necessarily follow the narrative of the story and you can have like my, the game that I won as a free people Mary and Pippin are actually the ones who stayed in the fellowship they're That's the awesome. only ones left Mary and Pippin stayed they're the ones who trekked top of Mount Doom Pippin died like right before the very end oh my gosh. and then Mary just was like ah like threw it in there and <laughs> I won it was amazing fiction on your fiction yeah exactly like <laughs> exactly so it's incredible if you like giant it's pretty epic yeah <laughs> It's a huge, <laughs> epic game. Um, it's wonderful. Try it at least once, especially if you like Lord of the Rings. It's it's yes. great. We'll, we'll, we'll yeah. move on. Lots of people like it. <laughs> it's number six on the area control uh, category and number 12 overall. For yeah. Like board game Geek. It was in the top 10 for quite a long time. Yes. Uh, so that is uh, War of the Ring at number six. Let's go ahead and get into our number six. Our number six is... Scythe, coming in at BDG's rank number 10. I mean, who doesn't like Scythe? I love Scythe. I mean, I could play Scythe. I played it so much when this game came out. Like, no, but you're <laughs> right, Steph. Like, uh, uh, we're, we're kind of back to playing it a lot now. Yeah. There was a time where it kind of dipped and you're playing other stuff. But yeah, there was a time where like Scythe was like the only thing going on. It was just all side. Yeah, I, I remember. All day. Yeah. <laughs> you know, from every everybody. convention, it's just like side, side, all side, side, side. If you go to convention, you're still going to see a lot of Scythe. But yeah. It was just, it was a thing. It was a movement. It was a moment. Yeah. Uh, and I, I quite like it. It's a game that you are, you are. Uh, it's kind of like people describe it, I think it's nice as a Cold War game. You're not necessarily an active, like, you know, uh, you know, firefights and stuff, but you're always sort of getting close to each other. You're and, always ready. You're just like. And you're aware, aware of what people might Yeah, and that's one thing that's fun is yeah. that you're, you, you do kind of want to spread out and get a good piece of the map because you can get a lot of points from that in the end. Um, uh, but it, it's just that weird tension of like, I see you going over there and it's getting a little too close to my area and do I want to go fight you? And you know, yeah. uh, there's a lot of, it, I, I like the tension of the area control and maneuvering. There's also a lot more going on too. Uh, there is area control, you are dudes on a map moving around and doing all that, but you're also limited by the actions you can do, which is what, which really what I like about the game. And you know, each turn you have four actions, but you have one pawn on an action, which you can't use unless you're a special player, but then you just have to pick and choose the actions in the order. So it kind of moves quickly because you kind of already know what you want to do before it comes to be your turn. So, you know, I've played a seven player game when the expansion came out um, in like 90 minutes with everybody who knew what they were doing. It was like awesome. The turns should be short. Because it's like, yeah, by the time part, it gets yeah. to you, you should know, you're like, okay, I'm gonna, because it's not, you have to pay attention to what other people are doing, but you're not directly like fighting very often. And so you're kind of like, okay, I'm gonna go, boom, comes to me, okay, cool, I'm gonna move, do, 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 I'm gonna do the bottom action, boom, 
go. And it even says in the book, once you're onto the bottom action, the other player can go. Because there's nothing I can do on my bottom action really that can that will affect you. Yeah, for the most part, it's... For you know, the most just, part... Just go. Take your turn. It doesn't yeah, matter. The actions, the four <laughs> actions you have uh, are fairly simple. It's like yeah. Move some people around, get some resources. And then, boop, next person. You know, boop, trade person. Yeah. for some other resources or get some power. You know, like they're yeah. pretty straightforward. It's just a solid game. Like it makes sense why it took off, why it continues to get played and, and loved. Uh, and it's good enough to be number six on our list. Yeah. Uh, so, and it's number uh, 10 overall. I don't know if we mentioned that. I can't remember. Yeah. Uh, but 10 overall. So it's a top 10 BGG game. Like people are into it. Uh, and that is our number six. So let's go ahead and get to number five. So number five. I want to keep talking about Scythe, Mike. We can, because number five is, is Scythe from Board Game Geek. For you, the folks at Board Game Geek. It's number 10 overall still. Uh, has still. It changed? Hasn't it, changed. No one's been like, oh, I'm going to change that. Scythe sucks. Yeah. So uh, all things we just said about Scythe, any additional points we missed? Same Z's. It's good because you can play it quick. Things move. There's a good rhythm to the game. There's lots of different factions, different powers. Don't have AP. Don't have AP. The mechs are different. Cool. Got it. Scythe, number five from you, the folks at Board Game Geek. 10 overall. is Keeper, coming in at BGG's rank 1066. All right, so it's a little over a thousand, but there's a lot of things to love with it. <laughs> yeah, we start, uh, we start burning games at 1200, that's all trash fire games. Yeah, so trash. you're throwing oh, okay. Barely. Throwing the garbage. No, so Keeper, yeah, it's in the key line. What does Keeper do that the other keys do not? Well, so I think it's totally a different game. So you can't, I think actually all the key games are, they are quite all different fair, yeah. from each other, even though they have the key title in it. Yeah. But um, this one has fluctuating boards that you're manipulating each round, then using these actions in a common display where people will place meeples. Now, the area control comes in where you're placing these meeples, but they're not your meeples until you claim a board with meeples on it. Oh. So at the end of the round, you have the you have claimed a board, and the meeples on it will come to you. So you have to like watch what people are doing and pick the board that have the guys that you want to use because each guy is a different color that will help you in other ways depending on the spaces that they take. Yeah, we actually no haven't played uh, Keeper yet. We've played some of the key games. Um, I think no. my, my favorite person is probably Key Flow, which is I think. Uh, one of the it's, newest ones, yeah. yeah I think the drafty yeah. version of Key Flower. It's cool, but this yeah. one sounds really fun. Yeah, it does I mean, sound The whole really idea fun. of putting, you know, getting some of the tiles, but they're not yours yet, but you're hoping to get that, and, and that sounds, it does sound kind of pretty deep, and like there's a lot going yeah. on. So yeah, I mean, this is by far my favorite key game, like okay. by okay. far, and I like Key Flow a lot. Like I really yeah. like Key Flow. Um, uh, key Flower was okay for me. It's just it can be a little mean with the different like yeah like that and that. But this one is just, there's a, a lot more Euro for me. And I like okay. it. Okay. Yeah, I, I awesome. love it. I'd love to try it. Yeah. That's awesome. Very cool. Yeah. Well, that's the uh, keeper number five. That's our number five. 1066 for now on Board Game Geek. But the, just everyone's just like, sometimes it needs tens. to get in front of more eyeballs rate before tens. it goes higher. Rate and 10. Everyone going rated 10 and let's just <laughs> mess up everything. No, rate things honestly. Do it. Do it for real. Do it how you actually feel. But keeper is, a, I think, a 10 in Stephanie's book. That's right. Step. It's really good. Number, number 10, number five for us, Keeper. Let's get into number four from Board Game Geek. So confusing. I know. There's a lot going on. <laughs> number four for Board Game Geek is Gaia Project, which is number uh, nine overall. Uh, so again, very well liked game, uh, and I don't know much about it. This is the one that's Space Terra Mystica. Yeah. It's so good. Okay, so Gaia Project, That's I actually don't know much about other than it's a thing. It is a thing. People quite people like quite a bit. Yeah, it's spacey oh, and they're taking it's really over. really good. Yeah. Okay, so why is it so good, Steph? So what's... I mean, there's more flexibility than the Terra Mystica game, which I also really like, but I can get frustrated in Terra Mystica because you can easily get cut off. At least with Gaia Project, there's, there's different ways to expand and um, you're not necessarily cut off. There's no like okay. direct path. So you're moving through space. So it's easier to, I mean, it's not quote unquote easier, but you can. And so we're versus Terra Mystica where you could easily just get just cut off by somebody. And you're like, well, all okay. right. So another right. big smart person game. Yeah. Uh, yes. So I'm out. Uh, if you no. can handle Eclipse, you can handle <laughs> this. It's yeah. not, okay. I mean, I do really it's want the to try same amount of process. So that's number four from Board Game Geek, but we have a number four. So I think we should hear it right now. Let's do it.
<laughs> Number four, for those who love pretty dresses, is Rococo, coming in at 206. It's so good. Mm. Oh, I love Rococo so much. He really likes to be a, a pretty person going to a ball. There's nothing wrong yeah. with that. It's I a great theme even that I feel like gets overlooked because of the theme. Yeah. People are like, I no, want to make dresses. No, I just think and it's like, hard to find. Yeah. Well, it also yeah, is it, that. It, it's, yeah, very just not around as soon. But it's getting reprinted. Different. But the thing yes. I like, it's even cooler than being a fancy person going to a party. It's you're like, no, I want to be the person that like, just has my hands over all the elements of the party. Like yeah. that statue, someone's like, who bought that statue? And you're sitting you're back like, like, I wonder who did buy that statue. Probably someone really cool and handsome, <laughs> you know? And they're like, who made that awesome suit? And you're like, I don't know, probably this, this handsome guy. jack in the top hat over here. So <laughs> I honestly didn't really think of it as like an area control game, but we're like, oh no, it totally is because the big main board is essentially the king's palace. Yeah. And there are a bunch of different floors on the king's different palace. Rooms, and yeah. you essentially want your dresses and suits in, you want a majority of your dresses and suits in each section of the palace. Yeah. Like if I have more than both Steph and Mike, I then get the points for that part of the palace. And, and as you go up, they get more and more valuable. And so mm -hmm. it totally is area majority, but it's, again, this is like one of the times where like, it's not like fighting. Like you're 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 no, coveting yeah. for spots it's almost in a race. the. You want to get there first. Or yeah, or you're like, like I want to be right next to this guy singing opera. That sounds awesome. But <laughs> you're, you're not like you're not like two dudes in like waist coats just beating the crap out of each other down by the fountain. You know, just like, 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 just like where you can like just be a dueling by area. <laughs> and duel. Yeah. No, the expansion adds jewelry, don't you know? <laughs> I know it adds jewelry, which is also hard to get. I hope it's going to be available. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's it's an incredible game that I feel like. Uh, got overlooked and there's kind of been a big grassroots campaign of people being like, this game's amazing. We've been on some of the front lines of that, been talking about this game, it's but it's very hard, hard to get. Yeah. Yeah. Luckily, uh, Eagle Griffin is making a new one with Ian O'Toole art, which is going to be, oh gosh, it's going to be amazing. And so I'm so excited. I cannot wait. We already have it. I'm going to buy it again. <laughs> this is also like a really cool deck builder. It's like yes. a take on deck building, which, which I really appreciate. I mean, when yes. I first played it, I'm like, oh my God, this is such a cool like take on deck building because you're buying cards and, but the way you play cards is different. And it's just, there's a lot of good things happening yeah. here. <laughs> choosing, you know, looking at your hand and choosing which, you know, three you want to put down for your actions and then hiring those better people that give you different bonuses. Like it's, it, 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 it took me a while to kind of put together that like, oh, that's exactly what you're doing. It is a deck builder. It's yeah. just not playing out in the same way because there's all this other stuff going on, which I think is what makes it such a great kind of deck builder game. It's very cool. So that's number four for us is Rococo, so uh, which is number 206 overall. And I'm curious if we're gonna see that number go up in the future, so we'll see. So number three is uh, Star Wars Rebellion, which is number seven uh, overall. And we were talking about War of the Ring earlier, which is sort of Lord of the Rings in a box. And from what I understand, Star Wars Rebellion is Star Wars in a box. Yep. Uh, so this is a big old game where you're either the Alliance of the Empire, right? Mm -hmm. And you're fighting for total domination of a galaxy far, far away. Yeah. Uh, and it has all the kind of fan service and stuff you'd expect from Star Wars in it. And it's real well liked. Yeah, people like it a lot. We haven't played it. I, I want to, just again, want someone to teach me. But you know what's funny? When I wrote down the top 10 a week ago, it was number two. Oh, Can you oh, believe really? that? <laughs> that's how quickly things change. That's oh. how quickly things change. I'm like, wait, that's not right. I was looking at my sheet. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, we plan these things ahead. We kind of know what the list we're going to do. That's and wild. I mean, that just, if there's, if there ever needed proof that like, if I rank my games, does it, does it matter? Does it change anything? It, it does. super does. Like it's yeah. shifted now, from now three to two to three. Garbage. Yeah, it's you know, because it used to be number two and now it's garbage. Yeah, so. I guess we're not going to finally play TI4 to maybe rank yeah, it higher. You know, uh, but yeah, Star Wars. This no, is kind of my huge. list to play too, because I've heard of nothing but amazing things. So yes. it's yeah. one that I want to play too. Yeah, so Very if cool. anyone wants to teach us all we can play, that'd be fantastic. And it's number Let us know seven overall. Was number two in area control, is number three now. Probably number seven next week. Probably. But that is <laughs> Star Wars Rebellion. But we got number three. Our number three is the 2018 version of History of the World coming in at 2,909. Again, wow. give it time. On the board Again. game, <laughs> give it time. <laughs> BGG, get your stuff together. All right, people? Start ranking right. it. Oh so what is History goodness. of the World stuff? So, okay, History of the World has a long history, if you will. And it's gone through many, many different versions over the years. And the more recently one, um, before the new one, was Brief History of the World. You 
probably played it on the app if you like that kind mm-hmm. of game. But um, so anyway, History of the World in my mind directly compares to Small World. Okay. It is just a bigger Small World. <laughs> Okay. Okay, so you are doing the same thing. Every turn, you're going to place guys on the map, depending on the cards that you have, the region you have, your your nation that you have, and, like, maybe a bonus that you have, and you are going to decline at the end of the turn. And then, so you can't get attached to anything you have, because it will just get demolished. And then next turn, you will do the same thing. You'll get a new nation, and you'll take over what you can, get whatever points you can, Hmm. and, and so you go into decline. And so if your guys stay on the map longer in decline, you'll get more points as the game goes on and the regions become more, more, more powerful or less powerful depending on the age that you're in. And so it's huh. played over um, five rounds and I think History of the World was played originally in seven rounds and Brief History is in six rounds. So it's, <laughs> it's kind of like gone down, but I think it's still the same amount of time as Brief History of the World okay. that you're putting in. So Brief History just has a little other things that are happening. I think there's like coins and stuff. There's just a few different mechanics that have changed. Yeah, yeah it's that's cool. That sounds really uh, interesting. It's just kind of cool to see a game that's been around for a long time and they continually like fiddle with it. And never quite be like, well, let's try this and try, you know, almost like a workshop of a game. Yeah. Uh, that sounds really interesting. And the whole, I, that's one thing I really appreciate in Small World is that whole going into client thing. So this game seems to like really yeah. be about that and seeing, uh, I, I guess, how you adapt to new things all the time. Yeah. So like each each nation will be different and have different abilities. And, yeah. and it will be like, this one is really good on attacking. So you go out and just attack everything this one's really good about building up so you may build some forts or you might get fewer guys i'm so sounds super yeah you sold me Steph, you sell me on games every week i'm just like i want to play all those games that sounds cool sounds great history of the world is our (laughs) i mean as you should and it's our number three overall 2909 for now uh overall ranking on board game geek so let's get into board game geeks number two get up there get up there area control majority influence game Number two overall ranked, I think this is why Star Wars little Rebellion game. was down to number three, is Twilight Imperium 4th Edition. Teeny little game. The new one, <laughs> tiny game, <laughs> teeny indie. Game. No one's ever tiny heard of it. Tiny little Twilight Imperium. Six, uh, the fourth edition of it, uh, my guess that that edged out Star Wars Rebellion because more yeah. and more people have played the fourth edition. It's the newest edition yeah. now. Uh, Twilight Imperium 3 was out for a long time. Uh, so in, in this game, uh, it's space domination. There's a lion on the front. It's big. It's long. I'm afraid of it. I'm afraid of it. And I've never played it because I'm scared. <laughs> never... Have you not played it either, Steph? Nah, it's too long. Nick's okay. our resident expert. Oh, okay, all, so I guess I'm the only one who's the only one who's played this game. I mean, it's this giant game where you're trying to do influence. There's a lot, city. man. Yeah, it's 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 fine. It's uh, fine. <laughs> it's here's the thing. It's just super not my kind of game, uh, sure. and it won't be your kind of game. And Steph, as far as I can tell, it won't be your kind of game either. Uh, it, it's it's fine. It's it's it, an incredibly impressive game for how big it is, how sure. intense it is. Yeah, it's like a big 4X game. You can do a whole bunch of different stuff. You're trying to like exploit different planets, different areas. You're trying to conquer. You're trying to like go take over people. Everyone has a different faction. All the factions have certain things that they're good at. Um, so it's it's. I wouldn't say necessarily it's like asymmetrical. It's just like each one, everyone's different. Gives you a little bit of a push yeah, in you know. direction. Yeah. Um, but it's it's all about like negotiation and all about uh, different, like having different alliances. Some people break those alliances. That's what I don't like. I don't like alliances in games because the they stress me out. Yeah, because yeah, I don't like I don't like breaking alliances. I don't like my alliances getting broken. It legitimately makes me feel bad no matter which way it's going. I just, I, it's not my kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. So it's, I wanted to play it really, really badly. One, because one of our very good friends, Shay, is like one of his favorite games. Yeah. He has he has a teaching video, go check out RTFM show on YouTube, he has teaching videos, he has an incredible teach of TI4. Um, and I wanted to play it because he loved it, loves it so much. I'm like, I want to play it once, just to see yeah. what it is. And I played it and I was like, cool. I don't need to do that again. <laughs> but you did it, so that's, that's but I did it, and I probably will end up doing it again. Yeah. But it's uh, it, I mean, with this, it was intense. There's like texting going on underneath the table. Everyone's like making alliances <laughs> and all. It's like, Jeez. and I'm just like, all right, and, and it went well, and I actually did pretty good. I came yeah. in like a really close third, um, and so it was, uh, it went pretty well. It is way too big, way too long. Just play clips. That's yeah, why, right. exactly, exactly, exactly. Every single time I want to play something like TF4, I'm like, I would just way rather play Eclipse. I could play Eclipse. It's three simpler, or four times it's instead. shorter, yeah. it's still long and beefy. Yeah. 
everyone's still different. Like I would, I would a hundred times rather play Eclipse than TI4, yeah. but people really like it and it's yeah. good, but it's just super not for me. At all. Right. Well, there you go. That's Twilight Imperium 4th Edition, number six overall. I like TI1 personally. Game. I'm a TI1 yeah. kind of gal. Yeah. yeah. Before they got too big. It's like Michael Bay before <laughs> doing Armageddon. It's Michael Bay, but like Bad Boys 1 versus Bad Boys 2. Yeah. You know, when he switched into full Old Bay. Entertaining. One's a little bit bloated. Got yeah, a little you bit know. too much damn Merino in it. You know, too. like let's pair it back a little bit. A little it's more. 100% too much damn with Merino. Shirt open. A little less like lizards getting blown up by landmines. All right. That's all I want. That's all the difference. Uh, and that is Twilight Imperium 4th yeah. yeah. edition. Hour number two is World's Fair 1893. Coming in at 718. 718. It's a shame. Go ahead. It's a shame. 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 It's shit. Uh, it's really it's, good. It's, it's really yeah. good. so good. It's a really small game, ultimately, where it's taking place in the backdrop of the World's Fair from 1893 in Chicago. Uh, Left out all the murdering parts, though. That's the expansion, the Devil in the White City expansion. Ooh, <laughs> how fun would that be? Uh, and in this, there are uh, different areas, kind of, uh, of the fair that you're trying to gain influence over. Like transportation, and agriculture, electricity, which is like you a know, big thing. The different things that were being, yeah, at the time yeah. were like art, the, the hit you thing know? to talk about, you know, and art. Uh, so you're trying to put out cubes uh, to gain influence of these different areas to score each round. Uh, and then you're also playing out cards. You're getting cards uh, from the areas. Or, thank you. You're getting cards from different areas, which uh, might give you like extra actions on future turns. Or if you manage to get like the agriculture, you get the green area, you can turn in some of your green cards to get these tokens, which is a bit of set collection. Yes. But some fun like fan service with the uh, cards, because all the little cards and stuff are actual uh, inventions and events and people and stuff from that time, from that World's Fair. So it's kind of like a cool little bit of history if you ever stop and be like, oh, that's cool. Like this was invented yeah. at that time. Oh, yeah. Or debuted at that. So, yeah. um, and Steph, uh, do you like this game? Oh, very much, yeah. So I love drafting games generally. And so you're picking the region to take the cards. So you might just want the cards, not necessarily the region. Yeah. But then you look at it later, you're like, well, I didn't want that, but I want my cube over here. So if I get this card, maybe I can move my cube back over here because different abilities allow you to move cubes or influence different regions differently. And so it, it's really clever little, and it's so fast. It's yes, so good. it's so fast. Yeah. It's honestly, it's, it's tough because each card is different and has a different thing that was happening at the thing, but the game's going by so fast, you literally can't read any of them. I know, it's almost <laughs> like another time if you just open up the box and like, I wonder what was. You can honestly learn fair. so much by lear reading the game, but you just can't, but yeah. it's it's so good. Give it a shot if you have it. It's easy, it's quick, it's, uh, it's, it's easy incredible. and quick, but provides like with those cards, uh, like interesting, fun things you can do, and you can set yourself up and feel quite clever in a game that's ultimately very fast and light, which is yeah. sometimes hard to, to pull off, so. World's Fair uh, 1893 is our number two. It's only 718 overall rank. What's wrong, Not too bad. Come on, rank that game higher. We probably didn't rank it either. That's our art. It's yeah. our fault. It's probably our fault. <laughs> anyway, there's a number one coming from each of us. Let's start with Board Game Geek before we come on back to us. Let's go to number one uh, area control game on all of Board Game Geek ranked right now. Whoa. So number one is a game that was the former number one for a long time for overall. Long time. It's all the way down to number five. Just a dirt game now, and that's Twilight Struggle. Yep. So not Twilight Imperium. This was number one Twilight when we first Struggle. started gaming. When I did that, I was like, I'm gonna get everything on the top 10. Twilight Struggle is number one. God, I'm glad I didn't get it. Yeah. So in <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Twilight Struggle is a two-player game that recreates the era of the Cold War. Yeah. And it moves forward through time, starts, I think, right in 1945 and, and goes to the I fall so, of, yeah. of uh, the USSR. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it's going through uh, different events. You're playing event cards. Real, all real historical events. events yeah. Historical events. And you're trying to... Uh, I mean, it's really a, a big area control, majority influence game. Of, of, you're trying to take over the world, essentially, either for good and freedom or for communism. Uh, and it's uh, big and heavy, and there's a lot of uh, very kind of everything is a, a like a heartrending moment. I feel like the decisions. It's to make. excruciating. Yeah. What do you think, Steph? Are you into uh, Twilight Struggle? Do you like it? It's big and heavy, and I've never played it. The theme is just not. Uh, not attractive. The board is just not attractive. I, I don't know. Nothing draws me to it, even though it's like so highly ranked. Maybe I should try it, but I'm just like, eh. 
Yeah, I'm yeah. with you there. Uh, we we had someone no, I agree. teach it 100%. to us and helped us run the game, so Nick and I played against each other. Yeah, and uh, so we had a lot of that kind of the the leg, the heavy lifting taken. Yes, you know, someone was very, very much holding our hand through the yeah. entire process, which was cool. And and I'm happy I played it, but I agree. I'm like I don't particularly like need to relive the Cold War no. and hope it comes out in a different way. And it it kind of like fits the game that it's sort of. Uh, you know, I hate to do it. It's a subjective thing, but in my eyes, kind of an ugly board, ugly aesthetics. It's just kind of like super ugly. I don't care. Feels says. old timey because it's so like this is history, and I'm like, well, it doesn't have to look like it's from the Stone Age, man. Like, it's make it nice, you know. You know but like... it's just that's just me. <laughs> it's not just you. I just told you. It's like it's yeah, so ugly. <laughs> it's it's one of those things where you don't have to like a game to expect it. Like I respect the heck sure. out of this game because it, sure. it is historically accurate. It's big, heavy, every single. There's like no luck. Every single decision you make is a conscious decision that can change the tide of the game. It's an incredibly designed game yeah. that I never want to play again. Like, you know what I mean? It's <laughs> like, it it's it's one of the things, and that's no shade to anyone who does like it. Yeah. It's just like, it's and that's one thing is like, you. I think a lot of people like, when you say you don't like their favorite game, they tend to get very offended by that. And it's like, it's like, no, it's like, I respect the heck out of the game. I just never need to play it again. Yeah. Like we've played it. I'm super glad we've tried it. Kind of like TI4 for me, like wanted to try it, went out of our way to try it. Yeah. And I, I really want to try the app because I think I might enjoy it more in an app form. And I heard the app is really good. Sure. But yeah, this game will just never be for me. It's not a kind of game go. I enjoy. I don't like the aesthetic. It's just, but that's just me, you know. Yeah. So that is, uh, that's like kind of how. Sorry, we, to just crap all no, over. It's not even that. Number it's one. saying it's saying that hey, you know, we have different opinions and stuff. That's what's really cool, and people really love it. It's five overall was number yeah. one for a long time. People love this. Like game. you said, it's very clearly designed uh, really well. Oh yeah. And that's number one of the area control uh, games, and it very much is an area control and influence game. So I think it's fitting that that's the number one ranked. Uh, seems to make sense, but it's not our number one. No. Not the three amigos mm -mm. number one. Afraid not. We have another one, <laughs> another different number one coming. It's coming from Steph right now. Well, many of you know my favorite game, and if you don't, you're gonna know right now because it's my number one game ever of wow. all time. It is Gigopolis, ranked poorly at three sixty four. Why is it so low? Well, that's Some not people, that low. Sometimes people don't get it, you know? They don't get it. They don't so, get it. I get <laughs> it. And since it's Steph's number one overall game, it has to be our number one uh, has game for area control. So tell us a little bit more about Ginkopolis and especially why for you, I mean, you play a lot of games. So for it to be yes. your number one, that's saying that's significant. something big. So yeah. what is it about Ginkopolis? It's been number one since I learned it back in like 2000, 2013 or or whenever I learned it around that time. And it's just, everything about it just meshes so well because you're drafting cards, you're building up an engine, you're building up the board. And there's a, there, so I get why some people don't like it because there can be a little bit to take that. It, depending on the cards you're given, you will be overplaying other people's dudes on the map. Okay. And you're, you're trying to create these regions to get more um, majorities and bigger regions to score more points um as the game goes on and so at the end of the game you know you might have a lot of different end game scoring cards for like maybe you get points for guys on red tiles and then so you try and build all the red tiles that you can and and the higher it is the more you know different points you'll get for other red th other things and so you just the the level that you're building is um how many guys are on it so if i get to overplay a level four i get to put uh, five guys on it with my fifth Jeez. building, you know. Hmm. So the more guys, the the more influence you can have in the area. So it's very much area control. There is a better take that, which is unusual that I like it so much. But the drafting mechanic is so great, and the engine building is so great that everything about building up the city makes it so much better. I love that. I love that's it. that's a good game. Like you know, if it's just forcing adaptability, you've got to you've got to change your plan. You've got to try to make the best of it. That's something that's engaging mentally. Yeah. I mean, that totally makes sense why it'd be a game worth playing right there. Yeah. You know, there's a lot going on. It's not a game. You want some games where you can kind of sit back and chill. And that one seems like, no, you want to be activated. You want yeah. to be, yeah. you know, If you're present. going to learn this game, I would say don't do it, like, when you're not ready to absorb a lot of, like, a lot of information. Okay. I okay. Mean, the, the player aid is not great. <laughs> and it's, it's kind of hard to teach because there are different actions that you're taking 
and they don't do similar things, but you're still like expanding the board, but you're not going to get the same benefit if you're expanding outward versus upward. And so there's a lot of different things that are happening. So it's a lot to remember in a first play. So it can be tricky, but it's still yeah. overall just you're doing one of three things. So yeah, that's nice. Well, there's a lot of you know, deepness and stuff when you only have a couple things you need to do, but that's agonizing to think of what you should do. That's one of my favorite things. It's yeah. just like, oh God, it hurts no matter what, but you only have a few things to kind of keep track of yeah. or have options according <laughs> to you. So that is uh, our number one, yeah. Gopolis. That's it. Area control games. Uh, I like how different both these lists were. They the thing really that's were. interesting is the games that we you know we kind of discovered, a lot of our uh, area control games were a little bit lower ranked. A lot of BGGs were like some of the highest stuff of all I mean, of Board Game Geek Total. Really, though, I mean, you, you pointed <laughs> this out. We, we looked at the ranking. It's like half of this list isn't the top 10 games of all time. Yeah. The lowest ranked game is 40. Yeah. Like, Eclipse is 40 on the overall ranking. It's like, yeah. that's. People like area control. It might be like, the, the mechanic of Board Game Geek, I think. Like, I, I mean, like, that's wow. crazy how, like, they're all so high up. Yes. <laughs> so, um, what do you think of, of both our list? And the list of Board Game Geek. And if you are interested in uh, in helping shape future lists or help change this, like we saw Star Wars change before within the prep of this episode, uh, and that's because people rank their games, which is yeah. something you can do. You can uh, start forums and talk about different things in games. You can watch videos and reviews all on Board Game Geek. So go, go ahead and start ranking your games and start joining that discussion because it's cool to see that it really does influence it and does. change it makes a difference. the landscape of the website, which mm -hmm. is really, I think, neat. Seeing that was like a cool, like, the test of our powers, you know, if we if we want to give <laughs> our opinions out there. So put your opinions of our list and Board Game Geek's list in the comments of this. Let us know what your top 10 area control games are. Let us know what games we missed, what games you agree with. Put that all down in the comments of this video. And make sure to put down in the comments as well what top 10 you would like to see us tackle next. We specifically try to pick games that people are asking us to do, or rather topics that people Categories, are asking us yeah. to. And think outside the box. We want to do like top 10 of this certain designer, topped in this certain artist. It's not necessarily always uh, mechanic-based, could be a theme. Whatever you really feel like, um, let us know down in the comments below. And yeah, anything else, Steph? Are we missing anything? Yeah, I mean, if you can click it in BGG and we can get a ranking from it, we can do it. Yeah, pretty much, <laughs> oh, pretty much. Rank it within BGG, <laughs> see what we're talking about? It's all on Board Game Geek. Go to Board Game Geek and do all this business and, and thumb stuff yeah. up, we really appreciate that. Helps us out a lot, helps out uh, all of this. That's the cool thing about Board Game Geek is that it's user driven you know you can help shape what this whole thing is which is really cool uh so i guess if there's nothing else uh i've been mike i'm nick i Steph. that was our top 10 uh board games of area control versus the top 10 area control games of you the folks at board game geek three amigos the three, three amigos. amigos strike again for better or worse <laughs> that is our list. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for joining us everyone and have a great day bye bye, -bye.